Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hi, George, we can hear loud and clear and we'll be starting in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks very much, Dan. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Workers' Party of Britain live meeting on the idea of a corona tax, a wealth tax. And what we're asking is, where is Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party? So we're going to set out uh, our idea for this campaign of the wealth tax, uh, why you should support it. And you'll be hearing from George Galloway, leader of the Workers' Party, and Jyoti Parad, deputy leader of the Workers' Party. So just as a brief introduction, we'll talk about the concept of the wealth tax, uh, why we're campaigning for it. Uh, the situation in the country at the moment is that there are now creeping up to three million unemployed. Not only that, wages have been stagnant for a long time. The cost of living has increased while our remuneration has not. And we even saw a news article a little while ago about the story of a thousand doctors threatening to walk out of the NHS because they're simply not being compensated for the dangerous and demanding job that they do. Uh, not to mention nurses and key workers across our society. And this crisis has really brought out who matters in our society, who does the work, who we need to survive. So the idea behind the wealth tax is a one-off 5% tax on any wealth that's cumulative wealth. It's not an income tax. It's uh, what's already in the bank, what's already in your assets. And that would affect uh, a mere 20,000 people. And these are the people who have actually gotten better off the backs of the last financial crisis and this financial crisis. Their wealth actually increased at a rate of four times um, the wealth of everyone else uh, during this period, while many others actually, in fact, lost a lot of money and wealth. Uh, the poorest 10% in our country actually pay up to half their earnings back. That's half their paycheck back in VAT, council tax and income tax. So this is often characterized as being greedy, increasing taxes, you're just greedy, you're just jealous. In actuality, the working people of this country, the people that struggle and strive to really make this country work and to provide for themselves and their families are actually paying in proportion more than the very richest in this country. So again, we're saying that these uh, 20,000 people that have over 10 million in wealth, we can break that down into 4,640 who have over 80 million in the bank. And then we have a mere six people with a combined wealth of 40 billion. It's a tiny minority of the country who are hoarding this money essentially, which could be used in order to provide for our key workers, support our doctors, nurses, bin men, transport workers, everyone that really works and struggles to make this society uh, a better place and be released in order to help create jobs for the rising numbers of unemployed, help build infrastructure that our country desperately needs investing in. And we're pressuring the Labour Party 
to adopt this policy. We think that if you are Her Majesty's opposition in Parliament, that you should be supporting policies that 61% of the public support and which would benefit the vast majority of this country. If you're a Labour Party, if you're a party of the workers, why are you not supporting this measure? And in fact, Sir Keir Starmer recently said he wasn't considering any tax increases to be part of the Labour Party policy. Rishi Sunak, the Tory Chancellor, is considering a rise in corporate wealth tax. Can you imagine the situation where a Conservative Chancellor is considering raising taxes while the Labour leader has ruled it out? So we hope you'll join us and support this campaign. You can sign our petition on workerspartybritain.org. And without any further ado, to explain further, here is George Galloway, leader of the Workers' Party of Britain. Well, there's, uh, there's actually scarcely uh, much need to, uh, to develop the points that you made there, Dan. Uh, they uh, speak for themselves. The numbers speak for themselves. Indeed, uh, a better question than will you support this petition uh, would be how could you not support this petition? Uh, the numbers of people involved, the smallness in the uh, numbers of the ultra high net worth uh, people in Britain, just over 4,600. If we applied this 5%, one off, Corona tax on them would yield £17 billion, which could energize uh, uh, small business, help millions of workers uh, who face, as you pointed out, uh, extremely difficult circumstances as we approach this winter. It's expected that by the end of this year, Unemployment in Britain will be 11.9%, a dangerously, dizzyingly high level of unemployment. Millions of people unemployed, millions more living on shrunken earnings amongst a working class that has suffered already more than a decade of austerity. Uh, in many cases with no pay increase at all for most of that 12 years, and uh, a tiny one uh, over the last couple of years, in virtually every case, a shrunken and degraded uh, public realm, uh, try getting uh, repairs done uh, in a council house uh, in the current parlous conditions of uh, local authorities that have themselves been strangled uh, by austerity. Whole departments, whole services simply ended. And the workers that worked in them and the public that depended on them left adrift uh, and facing a very uncertain and cold winter in every respect. And that's be before we add in uh, the effect, economic and public health, uh, of the new spike uh, in the coronavirus epidemic. The reason we've got such a vast audience tonight is because otherwise you'd have to be watching Boris Johnson uh, live on television addressing uh, the nation. But in fact, uh, he won't be doing a great deal of addressing and the nation has already returned its verdict on Boris Johnson's handling of the coronavirus. I suspect it's hard to believe uh, that anyone anywhere uh, is uh, confident uh, that the right man is at the helm of the ship of state as we sail into uh, even more troubled waters, both economic and health troubled waters. Uh, than we were earlier this year. 
certainly no such people appear to be forthcoming inside the Conservative Party. You will not find uh, even uh, members of the government uh, plighting their troth uh, to the ongoing premiership of Boris Johnson. Still less likely will you find ordinary Conservative members of Parliament uh, coming forward and saying how safe they feel in the Prime Minister's hands. As a matter of fact, uh, the boiling dissatisfaction in the back benches of the Conservative Party, the 1922 committee, uh, uh, pronunciamento today uh, that they are demanding uh, proper uh, accountability, that the government is behaving like a dictatorship and so on, all point to deep divisions, even inside the Conservative Party itself, uh, between the, uh, the more, let me call them what they'd like to be called, not what I'd like to call them, the more libertarian wing uh, of the Conservative Party, the, the Malthusians, if you like, the devil take the hindmost a crowd, the people who bitterly regret that we did not uh, follow through on the Dominic Cummings, Boris Johnson first instinct uh, of uh, so-called herd immunity, which means, of course, the survival of the fittest. Um, in a way, they have the benefit of being uh, honest. Uh, they, uh, uh, they believe in that kind of thing. Uh, they believe that uh, society is the law of the jungle. The rat race is not just for rats, uh, but for humans too. They believe in all that. They don't believe in, in us and always. They believe in me and now, and they always have done. They hoped to continue to be able to obfuscate that until a pandemic of this nature came along and they had to. Uh, face choices uh, about uh, capitalism and business as usual uh, versus public health, the protection of our elderly people, the protection of the weaker among us, and uh, they were forced to nail their colors to the mast, at least briefly. Uh, then when the prospect of 500,000 dead, uh, which was the prediction last February, March, uh, that would be the result of following an entirely herd immunity uh, policy. Uh, they balked at that. The, uh, the ruling elite and the Conservative Party blinked and uh, did something which, in a way, is worse. It's, it's neither one thing nor the other. It's neither a proper lockdown with proper test and track and trace uh, measures. It's, uh, it's not South Korea, uh, neither is it Sweden. Uh, it is uh, somewhere in between and lurching from one to the other, back and forward, back and forward, with some insouciance, Michael Gove uh, told the television today that if you can work from home, you should work from home. Uh, they called it uh, a change of emphasis. <laughs> it's actually a U-turn so startling you can smell the burning rubber from here. It is the precise opposite of what only a few weeks ago was a drumbeat from government, from the state, and from the media. Do you remember? Get back to your office and save pret a -Manger. Risk your life to save the sandwich shop in the mall where the office that you're no longer going to is. Now, it's work from home if you can. Uh, but of course, many lives have been uh, endangered uh, by the deserting of that policy in the first place all those people that were forced back to work, all those people who ate out to help out at the state's expense, uh, who now, it transpires, may very well have been passing the virus 
uh, one to another, and we are now in uh, quite serious trouble again. One doesn't want to be alarmist. Uh, cases do not mean hospitalization, and hospitalization does not mean death. Uh, but what if it does? What if it turns out that way? And there are not many people, as I say, who have confidence in Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock uh, to see our people through. In fact, since 1940 and the fall of Chamberlain, it's not possible, I think, uh, to remember an existentially more threatening moment. Not the virus itself, not just from the virus itself, but from the double whammy uh, of a rapidly escalating uh, toll from a pandemic together with the fall off a cliff of the economy. And it's not many people who think uh, that the that the war to come uh, is best left in the hands of Boris Johnson. And then you look across the uh, floor of the House of Commons and you inevitably conclude that, uh, that if, uh, if uh, Boris Johnson is not Churchill, then Keir Starmer definitely isn't Attlee or Bevin or any of the 1945 greats that built the uh, Labour government that changed this country uh, for the better and in some respects uh, forever. It's hard to exaggerate at the level, the pitiful level of leadership being shown by uh, the front bench of the Labour Party. Dan mentioned it in his uh, introduction. Uh, some of you may have heard on the radio this morning, the shadow foreign secretary who was asked if Keir Starmer's pre-election pledge to introduce a wealth tax on the top 5% was no longer a thing. And she answered, I guess not. A policy platform abandoned without even an announcement, far less a justification for that abandonment announced in a whimper by Lisa Nandy on a radio program. Has your flagship policy been abandoned? I guess so. It seems so is the answer uh, from the lieutenants of Sir Keir Starmer. Now, as I put it today on social media, uh, Bob Monkhouse, God bless him, God rest his soul, a wonderful, dazzlingly, a brilliant man, in words that might have been written uh, for his successor, Tony Blair, once said, once you can fake the sincerity, the rest is easy. Tony Blair could fake the sincerity, and that's why he went so far. But Sir Keir Starmer can't even fake the sincerity. The new look Labour Party, led by Sir Keir Starmer, Brill Cream Boy, uh, par excellence, it wouldn't fool anyone, not even uh, the most zealous supporter of Starmerism, if that is a thing, could claim that the performance uh, this week at the Labour Party conference and for many weeks as we have uh, sailed the troubled waters of this crisis could claim that they were impressed uh, by Sir Keir Starmer's uh, leadership. Uh, he is a desiccated calculating machine, but moreover one whose batteries are rapidly running out. A kind of semi-functional, half-functioning 
calculating machine who believes uh, that uh, by tossing in the odd union flag and the odd reference to uh, things that they rather condescendingly imagine will play along the red wall and beyond, uh, that somehow that will convince uh, former Labour voters who deserted the party in their millions or will return to them, not least because uh, the elephant in the room uh, that is ignored by Starmer and can only be ignored, it cannot be acknowledged, is that the principal reason why the Red Wall and Northern Labour voters abandoned the party in their millions is because Starmer and others sought to betray them over Brexit, sought to rob them of the Brexit that they had voted for, and that can hardly be acknowledged. People abandoned you, Sir Keir, not because you didn't say the word family enough, not because you didn't wave a union jack enough. They abandoned you because you betrayed Britain in real time. They saw your trips to Brussels, your intriguing with unelected uh, people in Brussels uh, to do everything you could to sabotage uh, the decision which 17.4 million British people had already made and had every right to expect its implementation. The predisposition of the Labour Party to side with those with foreign sounding names is a thing, Sir Keir, uh, that will not be out by the mere repetition. Uh, of uh, some buzzwords that a focus group somewhere told you rather condescendingly were the words that the people along the Red Wall wanted to hear. So here we have a political class all at sea, a prime minister and a health secretary shadowed by a leader of the opposition and a shadow health secretary none of whom, all of whom together uh, don't add up to uh, that famous picture of warm spit. And the people can see it. And so we have a political crisis on top of our economic crisis, on top of our public health crisis. We have a political crisis, a democratic deficit in the country, a country adrift with no one who could be trusted in a position to take the helm and steer the country through these troubled waters into a sunlit uh, future. And that's what we in the Workers' Party, with all due respect and uh, with absolute uh, awareness and self-awareness of our uh, current size and power. Uh, but we are right, you know. It is important, of course, uh, to be able to put your policies into practice. Uh, but first, you have to have the right policies. It is important uh, to win public trust in order to be given the leadership of the country. But you have to have leadership first. You have to have a leadership that is capable, can be seen to be capable uh, of uh, steering our people through these difficult times. So we have a whole raft of policies. We have a whole direction of travel that is easily uh, discerned from our website and from our weekly broadcasts, from our ag agitation on social media, from our work in Scotland as the uh, leading force in the 
Alliance for Unity in the run-up to the May elections there next year. We have and are developing a body of work and leadership and policy uh, which can be seen and judged uh, by the people. And we are confident about the future, although extremely concerned about the future of the country, the future of the working class in these very troubled times. We don't scorn reforms. Uh, we don't disdain uh, to offer one-off practical suggestions like this one, like this common sense plan to tax 4,600 people who have 80 million pounds in personal wealth. They should be queuing up to offer it, not have to be chased for it. If I had 80 million pounds, I'd be embarrassed not to offer you a one-off 5% contribution to the country in which I live, the country that made me, the country that educated me, the country whose police I'll call if I fall, whose fire brigade I'll call if my house goes on fire, whose hospitals I'll avail myself of if I, I become uh, ill and suffer accident. I'd be embarrassed not to offer uh, the 5% that we are demanding here. 5% on all personal wealth, not their income, their wealth. They wear it. They drive it. Uh, they live in it. They dine on it. It's not hard to find if the HMRC wants to find it. We are demanding uh, that on all high net worth individuals in Britain, including those 4,600 ultra high net worth individuals in the country, that they pay a 5% one-off corona tax. It's the least that they could do. And if it was done, it would provide some relief to the millions of our people who need it and who are going to need it as we enter uh, what is likely to be a long and bitter winter on our economic and on our public health fronts. Thanks very much for listening to me. Let me introduce you to my comrade Jyoti Brar, who is the deputy leader uh, of the Workers' Party and necessarily given my other duties, she is heading up our campaign on the corona tax. Uh, please stay tuned and welcome Comrade Jyoti Brar. Thank you, George. Can you hear me? That was beautifully put, really beautifully put. Very hard to follow that, I'll do my best. Um, as George said, we're launching this campaign for just a one-off tax on those big fortunes to help save those whom the current crisis has shown are in the greatest need. We're calling it a corona tax because it's a one-off tax and because it's the COVID crisis that has exposed these terrible inequalities that have been growing at an accelerating rate actually for more than four decades now. We're not saying it was the coronavirus that caused the economic crisis that we're now experiencing. And we don't think that the inequality in our society is a result of coronavirus. But it is clear that the current health crisis has deepened and exposed already in existing inequalities of all kinds in our society and is bringing those inequalities into the cold light of day in a way that nothing before has really done so clearly. We as socialists know that inequality is an inevitable part of the capitalist system of production. Personally, I remember even before I had an awareness of the political system under which we live, I remember the youth uprisings of the early 1980s. And they were a direct result of a rise in unemployment, in poverty and in inequality, which had set in when the post-war boom ended. Now, since then, for decades, we have seen those problems increase 
as more and more of our industrial jobs have disappeared and whole regions of the country have been left to stew on a smaller and smaller dole or have been forced to join the growing army of zero hour workers who slave away at all hours doing the most vital of society's jobs for unlivable minimum wages without sick pay, without holiday pay, without pensions and without meaningful union organization. Since the last economic crisis hit us in 2008, and from which the real economy, as opposed to the stock market bubble, has not meaningfully recovered, workers have been paying in a thousand different ways for the failings of the capitalist system. We've paid with our rights at work and with our pensions. We've paid with our community facilities and our social services. We've paid with our libraries and our schools. We've paid with our GP practices, our hospitals, and our care homes. We've seen this shameful sight of working families who are left homeless and without food. Every day, we see a new low as one organization after another from the United Nations on delivers a damning verdict on the state of Britain. We have an unprecedented, or at least unprecedented since the Second World War, housing crisis. We have an unprecedented hunger crisis. Nearly five million people in Britain are expected to become totally destitute this year. Think about that. That is utterly, utterly shameful in a country that loots half the planet and is awash in riches. And yet at the other end of the scale, we see that the handful of individuals who own the world's largest corporations are growing richer by the day. Even through this crisis, they're amassing more and more wealth to themselves. Just eight individuals on this planet control the same wealth as the world's poorest three and a half billion people. Those individuals obviously own almost nothing each. But the eight at the other end of the scale, of course, having control of so much, they inevitably are able to direct the use of even more of the wealth that is not directly in their hands. They can control whole countries, whole economies. It's not rocket science to see that this situation can't continue indefinitely. Even many millionaires and billionaires are getting worried they themselves can see that the present crisis is bringing with it the seeds of their destruction. And we in the Workers' Party will certainly do everything in our power to see that that is the case. But meanwhile, for those who faced absolute destitution right now, we must raise our voices and demand immediate measures to alleviate some of that suffering huge numbers of workers right now, and George talked about that earlier, are on a financial and social cliff edge. They need jobs, they need a pay rise. They need guaranteed housing in decent homes. We have to stop evictions and repossessions now. We all need the deep cuts in our social, education and health services to be reversed, and for those services to be renationalized and run in the public interest instead of being milked for private profits. The bottom line is that it was not workers who caused this crisis. We have to demand that we no longer pay the price every time the capitalist system sinks further into crisis. In the title of tonight's meeting, it says, where is Starmer? And George talked about that, why we are addressing our petition not to the government, but to the Labour Party. As Dan said earlier, why is it that Chancellor Rishi, the rich boy Sunak, is more amenable to the concept of a wealth tax than the leader of the allegedly Labour opposition, Keir Starmer? Sir Keir Starmer. What was he knighted for, ask yourselves. Even the Financial Times is researching how a wealth tax might work and canvassing its readership and its panel of finance gurus. I filled in their questionnaire recently when I was reading an article, it popped up. What do you think about a wealth tax? Hmm, I think it's a good idea, actually. How do you think it's gonna work? There are loads of questions they are asking. It's our hope, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So it's our hope that the Corona tax campaign will help us to highlight the fact that the Labour Party is a part of the problem for the working class. 
it is definitely not a part of the solution. Labour is part of the two-party duopoly that keeps the ruling class in power and the working class weak and divided. It's faith in the Labour Party, faith in the Tweedledum and Tweedledee fake choices in the fake democracy where we are offered a choice of blue Tories, red Tories, tartan Tories, yellow Tories and green Tories. This faith is a major obstacle to workers organising themselves effectively and fighting for socialism. But the truth is that only a socialist planned economy where workers decide how society's resources are used and how the products that workers make are distributed, where planning is done so society can meet the needs of its people instead of feeding the greed of a few, it's only that type of socialist planned economy that will ultimately solve our problems. But so long as we live in a capitalist society, we must be ready to fight back against the determination of the ruling class to make us, the workers, the creators of all of society's wealth, pay for the crisis of the billionaire's system. We didn't cause the crisis. We shouldn't have to pay for it. So please join us in demanding a 5% corona tax now to help save workers in Britain from destitution. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, uh, Jyoti and George for those very informative and uh, inspirational uh, comments on the campaign for a wealth tax and the problems in our society that we face. And on the subject of where is Starmer, I actually just uh, got an email from the Labour Party asking me to uh, support them in a campaign for decency, fairness, opportunity and security. I don't know what fairness they can provide in a society where all the wealth flows up to a tiny minority of people, what security they can offer without encouraging something that would see an increase in the public purse to spend on the public good. So I think this uh, it's an important campaign for everyone to get on board with and sign. So you can sign at workerspartybritain.org or go to coronatax.org. Please share and spread the message on social media Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your co-workers. I think it's an important thing to do. Thank you very much, everyone.